And right off the top this noon, congressional leaders walking through the 1200 building at Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School, the scene of the deadliest school shooting in U.S. history. Those nine members of Congress touring the crime scene frozen in time. And later today, a reenactment of the shooting will be carried out as part of a pending civil suit. We have live team coverage. Local 10's Christina Vasquez is standing by. But we're going to start things off with Local 10's Roy Ramos. He's joining us live from Parkland, where the reenactment will be carried out today. Roy. And that reenactment still has yet to begin, but lawyers for the victim's family say that this is expected to be very realistic. In fact, we are already seeing uh, crews setting up outside of that building, audio and video crews in preparation for this reenactment. We do expect to hear probably the sound of gunfire. As we know, real bullets will be used in this reenactment. We also expect to hear possibly fire alarms. Uh, and we can tell you that the Broward Sheriff's Office uh, has made several road closures here in this area uh, in preparation for this. As you can imagine, this could be uh, very traumatic for this community uh, and the people who live here in this area. Those Broward Sheriff deputies did block off the streets surrounding the school early this morning as those bipartisan congressional leaders toured that 1200 building with some of the families. This all with hopes that common sense school safety legislation will come from this visit. Now, as the congressional delegation left, we did spot those camera crews entering that building in preparation for this reenactment uh, of that tragic day in 2018. Uh, that reenactment expected to take place in just a few moments. It's all part of an ongoing civil case filed by some of the victims' families where we have learned that live rounds again will be used. 140 bullets are expected to be fired from an AR-15 into a bullet trap uh, similar to ones that we've seen online. We still have yet to see one out here today. Now that building fire alarm also expected to sound and families just hopeful that through this reenactment they can convey to a jury there is no possible way way that former school resource deputy Scott Peterson did not know where those shots were being fired from. As we come back out live, I can tell you that those crews are still working to set up just a few moments ago, we did possibly hear a loud sound. Right now, we're working to find out exactly what that sound was. Uh, again, that was a few minutes ago and not a sound that was consecutive uh, that would be similar to gunfire. Obviously, uh, this uh, is expected to be uh, very traumatic for this community. So we do know that schools in this area have been shut down. West Glades Middle, uh, which is just a few um, miles away from where we are standing, uh, has been closed. No students or staff will be attending uh, that school. But as this reenactment is underway, we will be sure to bring you all of the updates that come our way. For now here in Parkland, Roy Ramos, Local 10 News. All right, Roy, thank you for that. And now our team coverage turns to Local 10's Christina Vasquez. And Welcome she's joining us live in Coral Springs with details on a roundtable discussion centering on safety in schools after those lawmakers went inside the 1200 building earlier today. Christina? And that conversation between federal lawmakers and families of some of the Parkland school shooting murder victims is underway right now at this hour. And it follows really a historic moment. What we're talking about is nine federal lawmakers being in the spaces that the Parkland families who invited them, seeing where their loved ones died, where they were wounded. And this is a bipartisan congressional delegation that walked those blood-stained hallways, viewed those bullet-riddled classrooms, and now they're in dialogue with the families about their advocacy work toward school safety. Take a look. Oh, it was meaningful for all of the members of Congress that walked through the building today. Max Schachter's son Alex was shot and killed in his Marjorie Stoneman Douglas High School classroom. After bearing witness to the brutality last month, a tour inside the 1200 building where the gunman killed 17 staff and students, wounded another 17, Schachter had a call to action to lawmakers. Every legislator, every member of Congress should understand what happens when you don't prioritize school safety. Meeting that moment, Democratic Congressman Jared Moskowitz of Parkland. Parkland was the safest city in the entire state of Florida based on crime statistics when this event happened. And it is now home to the largest school shooting in American history. Who then tapped Miami Republican U.S. Representative Mario diaz Balart. If we can't get together and work together on this, uh, and then, you know, <laughs> what the heck are we doing? 
the pair bringing federal lawmakers into conversation with Parkland families. Well, that's why I'm so excited that we're here because federally, you know, we need to pass Alyssa's Act so every school has their panic button as their standard level of school safety protection in every school across this country. Co-chairing this morning's historic moment, a bipartisan congressional delegation tour of the Parkland school shooting site. You watch it on TV, you see it from a thousand feet away, you don't, you don't see what happens when a school is turned into a war zone. They walk the 1200 building's bloodstained hallways, viewed its bullet riddled classrooms. And I think that they understand the failures that happened today as we're walking through that building, we're identifying and members are coming up to me saying, if we only had done this, if we only had done this. There's no one thing that'll make the change. It's changing this and that and that it's working together across the aisle to find the answers that that neither side has on their own. Tony Montalto, father of Parkland murder victim Gina, is hopeful the tour will offer the lawmakers perspective and communicate the sense of urgency they feel to improve school safety. The whole point is to continue that conversation. And yeah, this reinvigorates with emotions and with images. While we have huge differences and that's healthy in democracy, I mean, we debate all sorts of things that there are things that are kind of like no-brainers. And so we see these Parkland families this morning as this day has been unfolding, continuing what has now become their lifelong work of channeling their anguish into action, telling lawmakers from both parties that school safety is not a partisan issue, but it is a pressing one. Reporting live for you, I'm Christina Vasquez, Local 10 News.